guys, what's up? Ford Tech Makey Loco here. Got a uh, common failure on Ford Tauruses. Heater core is plugged up. Customer complaint, low heat uh, coming out of the vents. It's not heating up enough. And you'll see it a lot more on the 3.0 uh, OHV Vulcan engines. They have the problem with rust uh, building up in there and then it eventually plugs the heater core. And uh, the only real fix for that besides flushing it and back flushing the heater core is to replace it. First thing we got to do is clean all that extra rust and sediment out of the uh, cooling system before you even think about changing that heater core out. So first thing you need to do is drain the old brown rusty coolant out uh, till it's empty and then we can do a flush. So drain that out into a drain pan and collect all that coolant up and then we can start our flush procedure. Once it's drained out, put the drain plug back in there and uh, we're going to fill it back up with water till it gets hot and then we're going to pull the plug again. I'll show you how to do that. So now that all the old tool is drained, we're going to fill it with uh, regular clean water to the top, let the engine get hot, and then we're going to do a uh, running flush um, setup here. You'll see what I mean. Now that it's full of water, we can uh, go ahead and start the engine and start getting it hot and flowing through there. So once it's started, make sure you keep uh, filling it as the air purges from it. Keep the bottle filled to the top doesn't overheat. That right there is how it looks. It's orangish, but um, when I first started flushing this, it was a real deep orange, rusty color. But this is the same idea. You'll see this. And then we're going to let it get hot. So we got that thermostat open and we got a circulation going on. We can clean as much of the engine and radiator and the inside lining of the hoses as possible with this method. While it's heating up we can uh, go ahead and keep it filled by putting a screwdriver of sorts to hold the handle so there's a constant flow of water going in there and that'll help flush it out also while it's heating up and then we're going to pull the drain plug and keep this going with a constant flow of uh, fresh water and then we'll have a constant drain on the other side of the system and uh, then we can get to that iron out cleaner next once we get a clear stream coming out of this system from the drain plug in the meantime while it's heating up it's best to keep it like this you still see some of the, uh, the rust coming out of there it's not as thick anymore but it's still good to have it coming out while it's heating up uh, so we can open that thermostat up and get a full flush. Your temp gauge be right about there, about half or just below. And that's how we know, uh, in general, that our thermostat is working properly. So now that it's fully heated up, we can go ahead and pull that drain plug and uh, start doing the real flush so we can get that iron out cleaner in there. Alright, engine's fully hot. You see we got clear water coming out over there. Top hose is nice and warm. We got a flow, so the thermostat is open. Now I can pull this drain plug out so we can get the full drain effect. This may be hot, so watch it, especially when the stuff starts coming out. You can see it's still dark down here, whereas up there it's clear. And you're going to want to pull this thing all the way out, like so, all the way out. Now, since we have a coolant loss, we need to come over here and adjust the setting on here so it flows out of the bottle here so you know it's full at all times like before so let's adjust that all right we got it adjusted so we got flow out of the top to make up for uh, the flow coming out down here all right now that we're running clear down here and up there we're gonna put that drain plug back in just by hand all right we got our drain plug back in now it's time to uh, Add the VC9, the iron out cleaner. Pour it in first, so we put the water in afterwards, it'll mix. 
and that way this will get deep in the system instead of being floating on top in the bottle here. Then fill her back up to the top. So now the water level is holding. You know you got a full radiator and you can go ahead and start it. Let it run and do its thing. Once you got it started, watch that level. It's going to start dropping. Now once that iron cleaner has had its time to uh, take the iron out of the system, you're going to want to do a, a regular hose flush again with it going up here, just enough coming out the top like that, and down here, fully open, got the drain plug fully out, so that it can rinse all of that iron cleaner out of, out of there. It's very important to get that iron stuff out of there, the actual cleaner itself that cannot be in there when you're uh, all done. So let it flush like this for a while once it's hot and uh, let it really flow through the system and wash as much out of it as you can and then we're going to flush the lines and stuff once we pull the heater core out to make sure it's out of there also. Here you can see why we changed that degas bottle. There's just too many cavities in there to fully clean it. Now let sediments and get right back into the uh, system. May look clean from the top. But in all reality, that's what's stuck in all those cavities. Something to think about. Okay, on ours, we are changing the bottle, so I got all the hoses disconnected. This is the main hose down here that goes to the radiator and the lower radiator hose. We're going to put pressurized water through there until we start getting water out of this hose and that hose, which are two bleeder hoses for it. The bottom uh, drain is still open. This way we're going to get some water through and get the rest of that rust uh, chemical out of there. And there it is coming out, crystal clear, and it's warm, so we know it's coming backwards through the engine. Flushing out instead of going back into that bottle. Now if you are going to change the bottle, there's a 10 mil here, a 10 mil there, that hose, that bleeder hose, and that one obviously, and then you get your main one right there, the big clamp on it. And then uh, it just unhooks from the fender well there. And it hooks back in when you're done and bolt it up. It's a good idea. All right, now that everything's back together, we can go ahead and put this plug back in and we can start filling her up. Make sure when you tighten this, you tighten it by hand because it's plastic and it can crack. Snug it like that and that's it, just a little bit. You'll feel it. Now when you refill it with the gold coolant, fill it more, mix it more at a 60-40 or 70-30 um, mixture. That's 60% coolant or 70% coolant. Um, because you do have that water from flushing in the engine and it's going to mix and uh, dilute it. So 60-40, 70-30 and we should be safe. And uh, when they mix up, it'll be closer to that 50-50 where it should be, um, that's specified. You can see it's got a nice clean bottle, nice uh, gold color to it. You can see a return over here from the intake manifold. This one's more of an air bleed over here. This one will actually return from the intake. You can see it flowing through there, it's pretty cool because it's all new. So uh, let it run for a while until it gets nice and hot and uh, make sure you got to the cold fill line when you're done after you recheck it the next morning or later that day when it's cooled off. In the meantime, just make sure it's still in that range when you're top and we're bleeding it out here. Once you're satisfied and you got it all bled out, put the cap back on, your new cap. Nice and tight till it clicks, and you're done.